a minute 32 for 863. That was a faster lap than it was for, with 11 laps remaining. We came to close in a little bit on, the, on two of the back marker cars. I think that is another Haas car. This is a bad day for Sergio Perez, and, uh, and I think I would believe that is the McLaren of uh, Daniel Ricciardo. Usually Ricardo doesn't run good here at the uh, at the uh, Paul Richard circuit. Trying to get around Ricardo. I think this is the battle for P14 and P13. Trying to catch in on uh, Sergio Perez. Well, this is the battle for P16 and P15 between Perez and Ricardo. He's trying to get that position. He will have DRS and see if he can try to get around them. And so will I. Yeah, I'm going to have to hit the brakes so that Perez can try to get around Ricardo. Carlo and Perez, let's see go by, and they both go a lot down. I've had it so far, and I told you I was going to rebound it from my previous one. Man, that I should have played the same sad strategy the, as the others did in the Canadian Grand Prix. And I'm very surprised no one has watched uh, my mixer channel. I think they're still into that panic mode uh, once again. Well, there's no reason to panic now because when we get into April and May and everything, I think everything will calm down and, and hopefully uh, those new uh, cleaning jobs uh, will, will be quite a fit. And now I'm trying to catch up on uh, another lap car there. That's Romain Grosjean in the rental. Reynolds have not done too well uh, this season with their speed. They've been kind of like the uh, the mid marker of the season, and Mercedes is making a huge comeback. That's it, you fastest lap for the race. And another uh, a, a blowing lap right there, and, and this lap on 46, that is minute 32.673. So my car is still glorifiably fast. 
As I now catch up on uh, Romain Grosjean. And uh, the third place car, Daniel Cafiet, is having some mechanical problems on his Mercedes, and he may be losing that podium spot once again. And it has happened again so far for Daniel Cafiet. He had a broken wing in the uh, Monaco Grand Prix, tried to hold on to it, but then with the two to go, Waver and my teammate K Bag uh, made the pass, and then. And now uh, Daniel Cafiet has some kind of mechanical problem on his car. And he needs to get that fixed fast because he's going to be losing that podium uh, position. There he is right there, and look who's coming. It's my teammate, Kevin Magnuson. He is going to be closing the door on Ke Daniel Capia at the P3. He's going to be losing a lot of ground because everybody else that has those fresh medium tires is going to close the gap dramatically on, on Daniel Capia. So Capia is in big trouble. He is in severe trouble now. So this is going to be a 1-3 finish uh, for the Red Bull Hondas. I don't think Kevin Magnussen will be able to catch forward on Lucas Waver. See, Waver is already right there. I'm already on the other side of the uh, of the Paul Richard circuit. That's how big my sizable lead is on that 47. And everybody has kept themselves calm, nobody has been aggressive out there. A little aggression early in the race and the start of the race. And here comes K Mag and he's gonna take the P3 away from K from Daniel Capiat. What a tough break for Daniel Capiat over there. Was going for his first podium finish of the season and now it's ruined with the mechanical issue. very heartbreaking because you race so hard out there you have a good season to, to look forward to and then stuff like this at the end that happens and then Dan Capilla goes into another drama page again Seventh win of the season and a big rebound, and a big rebound win uh, of this race. This is much better results uh, than it was in Canada. Daniel Capia uh, fixes his uh, problem on his Mercedes. 
But let's see if he can try to catch up uh, to regain uh, his uh, podium finish uh, over Kevin Magnuson. Magnuson is right there, but it looks like he lost a lot of ground. He lost uh, three positions uh, after fixing the mechanical problem. Yeah, he has already lost a couple of positions because Gasly got around him for P4 and his teammate Max Verstappen got him into, passed him in for P5. But it's going to be too late uh, for Danny Capilla to, uh, to to regain uh, ground or rebound, so he, he might be able to have to settle with the P5 uh, finish. Man, another glacial lap here with the last four laps here of the race with the Finna 32.290. going into uh, this section of the circuit. Lots of rating here at the uh, French Grand Prix. This has been a, a terrific race here today. Uh, and this is a, a very quiet sport day here today, and it's going to last this way for about a month. Uh, but the show goes on with the uh, with video games. So we're just trying to make up for it for, for all the postponements and cancellation that has been going on in the past three days. It has been a, a dark day week. But we have a lot of bad times and everything, but the good times will be coming back in April and May. And hopefully uh, new jobs uh, will be occurring as well. And like we said, we got to keep uh, people, uh, some of the panhandlers and peddlers off the street, and they definitely need to make new job opportunities. They need to change their ways and change their minds. Alright, next time around will be two laps remaining here at the French Grand Prix. Still putting up a sizable lead. This is going to be a nice rebound for, for what we had gone through in the Canadian Grand Prix. Kevin Magnuson was terrible in the Canadian Grand Prix, finishing in P11, and then I was uh, in P4. And there's George Russell. He started dead last in this race. At, he improved a bit, uh, but not quite enough uh, to last for finishing a P3 position. But he's just running all by himself out there, and he's looking a little bit bored being a P13. There's only one lap of fuel remaining. And I'm closing in on him, and uh, that might be the final car that I'll be passing uh, through the rest of the race so because we only got two laps remaining here at the French Grand Prix. Look at that, 
30 second lead over Lucas Waver. And final lap here for the French Grand Prix. One more lap to go. One more lap to go here at the Paul Richard circuit. And looks like Russell is going to let me by. Yes, he does. And after I reach into the straightaway, then I'm going to go full throttle with Rich Mix. Outstanding day, but this will promise to be a, an emotional day. But this is for all the people from around the world to get well and stay healthy and stay clean and stay positive from their own well being. But this will be for them to, to fight the illness. And we will fight in combat and we will win. And this is what I'm about to do to win my seventh race of the season. What an amazing day this has been. And I win the French Grand Prix. Great job. You've done everything we wanted today. Awesome rebound day for the Red Bull Hondas. Victory for the team from Milton Keynes then. After a we certainly can get a ton of French fries today. Tell me, Ant, how did this they win. manage to achieve this win? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today. On the next race well in the, uh, the Austrian track, Grand Prix, I'm going to be changing the color of my uh, helmet, and I'm going to be changing the green uh, to celebrate a, a little bit of lottery of St. Patrick's sport. Day. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to every one of the team. Ooh. Oh, my neck is feeling a little bit sore after uh, running almost uh, two hours of this race. Uh, this race only lasted for about an hour and 46 uh, minutes in total for, for qualifying and doing the whole race. Let's see how the driver standings have changed. Hawk increases their championship lead. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Anthony Davidson, who do you pick? There's a few contenders, but George Russell definitely stood out, I think. A really solid drive from him today, and one I'm sure the fans enjoyed. Let's move on to the constructors. Red Bull pull further ahead of the standings. There was also a strong showing from the Mercedes team today as they make their way up the standings. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. So what a great job and a great rebound uh, that we win our seventh race of the season and a great uh, recovery for the Red Bull Racing uh, Honda. We redeemed ourselves and finished one P1 and P3. But Lucas Waver still holds on with the runner-up finish. Great job for Pierre Gasly. But I think the most dismal uh, job was Daniel Kafia. He was trying to do so hard to win a podium finish uh, this season, but ended up in a dismal P6 uh, in front of his home crowd here in the French Grand Prix. Leclerc at seventh. Butler did a nice job. He would have been the driver of the day, but uh, I don't know why they picked uh, <laughs> George Russell be the driver of the day. And also uh, his teammate Voltes did a great job. Top 10 finish, and he gets that uh, honorary uh, one, construct one points uh, in this instructor standings and into the driver's point standings. And here you see the standings now. I'm still set 79 ahead of uh, Lucas Weber. Kevin Magnussen goes in, still in P3. Gasly moves up to fourth over Devin Butler. And Verstappen also moves up from eight to six over Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Vettel. And then in the constructor standings, we are 111 ahead of from um, Racing Point. And Ferrari still stands in third place while Mercedes is catching up and they go over the uh, Alphataris uh, for the top five uh, finish. We're certainly going to take a look at the highlights in this race. It was a perfect, superb race for us for the uh, Red Bull Honda team. 
and this is for the people from, from around this world, and we'll give an honorary uh, emotional love, and this win will go for all of them from all over the world to keep uh, their well-being at, at a perfect rate. And make this economy uh, dramatically uh, improve, literally. Now we show some action from the beginning of the race. And remember, I dropped from uh, P4. Then I was able to, able to do a great, a quick battle uh, between Kafia and then. I was taking some patience trying to pass Lucas Waver for the lead. We played a little cat and mouse game in the beginning. Then when Lucas Waver hit the brakes, I thought I had an opportunity, but still not enough room. But then I did have enough room going into the final uh, apex turn, hard apex turn to the right. And then I took the lead and I stayed that way all the way through the end of the race. And then I was doing some side by side uh, because I was winning the race, giving an emotional win and the French Crown Prix. So, um, next thing we'll do, we'll just do the interview and then. We will wrap it up here for, for the French Grand Prix. That was a great episode for 134. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. You performed better than last weekend. What changed? Well, the change was uh, when we uh, did reliability of the engine, and uh, I think our power unit was uh, so much better than it was uh, last week. So that was the only change that we need to needed to do. But we should have done that uh, for the previous race, but we were just saving it. You've had experience with Devon's fast, aggressive style. Any advice for the drivers he passed today? He did an amazing job out there. He was uh, in 12th place, but he ended up. Uh, the Alvatari team did a great job getting P8 and P10, and hats off uh, to both of them. And maybe in the upcoming season, they'll still maybe get some great runs. You had a pretty close finish with Lucas. What's it like racing a former teammate? Uh, he did an amazing job out there, and uh, he got the fastest lap in the final lap, but it was too little too late, but another runner up finish for him, and and he did, a, he did an improved job as well. And, you know, he got podium for the last one, but uh, he had a nice car. He uh, did well. How does it feel sharing a Formula One podium with your old F2 teammate? Well, it's amazing. It never gets old, but we're still going to continue to do that all season. Great. Well, that's everything. Well, all right then. Well, that is going to do it for our emotional episode for our Form Formula One 2019 career mode in the French Grand Prix. And thank you all for watching and everything. And... Uh, Pretty much is going to be boring for about a month and everything, but we'll still provide you some uh, great uh, Formula One 2019 races uh, uh, on my uh, on my game console and everything. But that's how it's going to be that way for the next uh, month or and a half, month or month and a half or so. And let's hope uh, that that will be the case and keep our fingers crossed for that. And everything will will resume uh, slowly and quietly uh, for future endeavors. And hopefully we'll, we'll see the events uh, back in action again. So until then, we'll see you in the next one. And episode number 135 will be the Austrian Grand Prix. And I probably will do that in the morning. So I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your night. And we'll see you into the next one. And, and just a reminder for this. Everyone in this world, please stay healthy out there. And stay clean and positive And have a great hygiene. So long, everyone. Goodbye, and we'll t and we'll see you in the next one in the Austrian Grand Prix. Good night.